The movie begins with a teenager named Baby. And he is not alone. Three of his colleagues were in the building using full weapons. They are robbers. Baby is someone who always listens to music, even when he is doing his actions he also listens to music. He did this not without reason. Apart from being useful as a countdown alarm, this method also eliminates the ringing in his ears. Because he has a disease called tinnitus. The music ends, which means the countdown is over. Three of Baby's colleagues were seen leaving the building to get into the car. The robbery was successfully carried out. But the police arrive when they are about to escape, and an epic chase scene ensues. Here Baby does look cute when compared to his three colleagues. But when he drove the car even his big colleagues looked pale and frightened. Long story short, Baby managed to trick all the police cars on the road, but not the helicopter above him. When he saw the red car in front of him, he immediately entered in the middle between the two cars. And what happened was. This technique also allowed Baby to successfully trick the officers on the helicopter. As usual they always end up in a parking hall to change cars and remove traces. A little story here Baby is a skilled rapper who is famous for an event called Spirit 85, which occurred 10 years ago. Namely the moment when he cornered the officer's car on Jalen 85, and then he managed to escape. Baby also has an interest in music. And he also often makes remixes of people's conversations taken secretly and sets them as music. Here, it is not without purpose that he uses music as a countdown or alarm when carrying out his actions. The scene moves to a hall or place usually used as a headquarters. Profit sharing was also carried out by Doc. He was the man of all these robberies. Hearing that Baby's distribution was the same as the other colleagues, Griff, one of his colleagues, protested because he thought Baby's work was very passive and clean. While the rest have to deal directly with blood. Without answering Griff's words, Doc went straight threatened to fire him if he didn't agree and continued to bother Baby. One by one they left the place. Come to the division of Baby. It turns out that Baby didn't get the results Doc promised. Doc said that Baby's share was considered an installment to pay off his debt. And Baby still owes one more robbery until the debt is paid off. But Doc doesn't mention what debt Baby has incurred. The news on TV was busy talking about the bank robbery that day. Joe, someone who adopted Baby when he was little, also knows this. Both parents died in an accident. Baby's tinnitus was also a result of the accident. But fortunately he could still be saved. It was clear from the look on Joe's face that he was really worried about Baby. Even though Joe has a disability, he can still communicate with Baby smoothly. The scene shifts to a bar where Baby frequents. Suddenly a barista passed by singing lyrics saying his name, Baby. But when he was about to listen to the recording again, suddenly the barista came and startled him. They got to know each other and she was Deborah, a barista who had just worked in Burrito. No, I... A second. I have all... They also seemed to talk a lot and like each other. But suddenly Baby's cell phone rang, which meant it was a code that he had to immediately meet Doc. Baby. Well, um, if you have any more questions, just holler. B -A -B. New crew. Over here. Doc never used the same team members on each heist. He always collaborates with various criminals to outwit the police. But because no one can replace Baby, he will never be replaced. And made him quite famous among other robbers. Music all the time? Did your life disconnected? One of the robbers named Bats doubted Baby's abilities, especially since he was still young. But Doc said he met Baby 10 years ago. At that time, Baby accidentally stole Doc's car for reckless fun. Even though there were tens of kilograms of drugs in the car. At first Doc wanted to be angry, but after seeing Baby's abilities, he instead chose to hire him. And since then Baby has been trying to pay off his debt. Long story short, the meeting started and the robbery plan was discussed. Bats is increasingly annoyed with Baby's behavior, who is enjoying listening to music as if he doesn't care about their robbery plans. 
But that assumption immediately changed when Baby was asked to summarize the plan that Doc had just conveyed. It turns out that Baby can focus on listening to two things at the same time. You lay down your whole play. He ain't even listening. The target is an armored truck at Perimeter Trust in Dunwoody. To switch cars ready, but you want me to hit the long state parking street? That's my baby. Fuck your baby. The next morning the robbery began. Bats and two of his members were going to rob a money delivery car. And as usual Baby waited in the car while listening to his favorite music. A few minutes later Bats returned to the car with several bags full of money. The plan went very smoothly until suddenly their car was intercepted by a Marine who happened to be at the location. <laughs> It turns out that this Marine was really determined to stop their escape. To the point that it almost caused them all to have an accident. The furious bats are about to release their shots. But Baby secretly stopped his action by swerving in the opposite direction. Until finally they managed to escape from the Marine's pursuit. Now. Ah! New run, let's go! Problems arose again when they were stuck in traffic at a red light. They were all forced to escape by robbing the car at the front. The car belonged to a young mother whose baby happened to be in the back seat. Bats was annoyed to see that baby, instead of immediately stepping on the gas, took the time to get the baby out of the car. Long story short, when he arrived at the base, Bats warned baby about his actions, who was secretly trying to save the marine. He will not hesitate to kill Baby in the future if he still behaves like that. Bat's words were not just a threat, because as soon as he returned from buying coffee, one of his team members named Jetty, he killed him. Just because Jetty accidentally left his weapon at the scene of the crime. Long story short, that night before parting, Doc said that all of Baby's debts had been paid off. But before leaving there, he was asked to get rid of Jetty's body which had been kept in the trunk of the car. I'm a man of my word. You're all paid up. Cost for celebration. Seeing the destroyed car makes Baby remember his past. Where both parents died in an accident. And since that incident, Baby's ears have been affected, so he always listens to music to help him hear. After being free from debt, the first thing Baby did was meet Deborah. At first the two of them were having fun chatting in the restaurant. However, coincidentally, Deborah's working hours were over, they continued their day to the laundromat. Basically they get to know each other better. Deborah and Baby even have the same dream, namely traveling to various regions while driving their respective dream cars. And that night before parting ways, Baby dared to ask Deborah out on a date at the most expensive restaurant in town. When Baby got home, Joe was still worried about Baby's job. Baby also told Joe that his work was finished and promised that he would immediately look for a new job. Joe also asked Baby to choose a job that makes people happy without endangering other people. And here is his new job. That was that? I know. That night Baby and Deborah met at a fancy restaurant for their first date. But when he wanted to pay the bill, the waiter said that it had all been paid by a man. While pointing at someone, namely Doc, at this moment Doc again invites Baby to carry out the next robbery. Baby immediately refused, saying that he now had a permanent job. But unfortunately here Baby is not given any choice, other than accepting the offer while threatening him with soft words. The next day Doc welcomed Baby at his doorstep. He was immediately taken to a bank. Baby is asked to look at the situation inside, starting from the number of employees. CCTV and security officers. And here Baby is not alone. He was accompanied by a small child who was Doc's nephew. This was done so that Baby would not be suspected by people there. When he got inside, Baby looked panicked because this was the first time he had done this action. Because usually he just drives. But the funny thing is when Baby is busy counting CCTV, this little boy even casually said about what was in the room along with the number of CCTVs, employees and security. When he arrived at the bank teller, Baby was served very well. But suddenly... That your boy? Sure. How old is he? Four. Eight. 
Yeah, she sure is. <laughs> Arriving at Baby's house directly contacted Deborah. Without further ado, he said that he wanted to invite Deborah to go somewhere without any plan and with a car that was not his. These were the words that Deborah had mentioned at that time. Baby again met his old friend. As usual, all strategies were briefed by Doc. But that night they were asked to meet one of the Doc friends first. Namely to take a weapon supply. But the bats instead messed up everything. He fired on all the weapon sellers. He reasoned that one of the crew from the weapon seller was his old friend who had betrayed him. They immediately left the place. But before returning to the bats headquarters suddenly asked Baby to stop at a bar. Where it is a bar where Deborah works. But Baby did not want to obey the request. So that the bats who did not receive immediately yelled at the baby and asked to immediately turn the car back to the bar. Deborah who was at the cashier also looked very happy about the arrival of baby. But baby instead gave her a cynical face. With her annoyed face Deborah came to their table to offer a menu. But because of the service that is not so good, bats feels offended and immediately issued weapons. Fortunately here Baby managed to hold the bats and they immediately left the cafe. Shortly before leaving the bar with a cynical face, Baby came to Deborah to give tips and a piece of tissue that reads. The scene moves to the headquarters. It turned out that Doc had been waiting for their arrival to ask for an explanation of the weapons transaction. Knowing the transaction did not go well. Bats immediately denied and said that the crew was the one who shot first. So Bats and his colleagues have to fight. Because it was justified by all crew. Doc also believed this. But here Doc said that their task would be heavier because what they shot was a member of the police who worked for Doc. And within 24 hours the city will be surrounded by police everywhere. However, because of their joint agreement they still chose to keep doing the action. As soon as the situation started to become conducive, Baby quietly ran away from there. But just as he started the car engine, suddenly Baby's friend, Buddy, appeared and asked various questions. At first Buddy didn't mind Baby's escape, but suddenly Bats comes, and it turns out he managed to steal Baby's recording tape, which he usually uses to record his conversations with Doc. As a result, he is now suspected of being a traitor. I to listen back to conversations I make. To be fair, even the cops couldn't come up with an excuse that fucking dumb. No, you don't. When he woke up from fainting in front of Baby, there were already dozens of recording tapes. Because Bats took the tapes from Baby's apartment. He was worried about Joe's condition. But Buddy says they didn't touch him at all. Their suspicions about Baby's betrayal immediately faded when the contents of each tape were played. Another problem arose because among the tapes was a recording of his conversation with Deborah. And they all remembered that Deborah was the name of the waitress from the restaurant they had stopped at. Because he didn't want his girlfriend to get into trouble because of this. Baby immediately promised that he wouldn't do anything wrong in tomorrow's robbery. Have you been talking to Deborah about us? Boy needs to go get him home safe. No, you're not getting a new driver. I'm your driver tomorrow. Long story short. The next morning the robbery started. Buddy and Darling enter from the front door while Baby drops Bats off at the back door. Not long ago the robbery started. Baby accidentally ran into the friendly employee who served him yesterday. He immediately gave her a code not to go inside. But instead of running away, the women called the police. As a result, as soon as Bats left the building, gunfire broke out. Baby, who couldn't stand seeing innocent people getting hurt, decided to take a crazy action. Put on the gas! Come on, come on, come on, come on! No! What you do, baby? What the fuck did you do? Buddy is very angry about baby's action just now. But their anger stopped because they had to immediately escape from the police. And in the midst of running away the three of them decided to split up. Baby himself chose to run away into the mall to outwit the police. The only way for Baby to escape from the police is by driving a car. That's why he immediately stole a car in the parking lot. But just as he stepped on the gas he had an accident. 
What's even more funny is that the car he hit turned out to be occupied by Buddy and Darling. Jinx! Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go! As soon as his girlfriend died, Buddy immediately took brutal action by shooting all the police without mercy. He also tried to kill Baby because he was considered to be the person behind his lover's death. But fortunately, the large number of police surrounding Buddy gave Baby the opportunity to escape first. Get out of the car! Get out of the car, lady! I'm sorry, ma'am. Baby immediately picked up Joe who was still lying limp in the apartment. After taking all his savings, he immediately took Joe and ran away to a nursing home. Because Joe is deaf and mute. Baby doesn't forget to record Joe's identity as well as various favorite foods into a recorder which Joe could give to the officers on guard there. I like frozen peas and meatloaf and please look after me. Thank you. Now Joe is safe. Now all that remains is to save Deborah. The plan was for the two of them to run out of town that night. However, when Deborah was about to be picked up at the restaurant, Buddy was suddenly there. From the start, he could guess that Baby would pick up his girlfriend. And Deborah's death should have been a fitting revenge. But just as he opened fire, a policeman suddenly entered the restaurant to stop by to urinate. And when Buddy's attention was diverted, that's when Baby launched a surprise attack. Isn't that right, Baby? Baby and Deborah also managed to escape. But what they need now is a car. Luckily, there were two hot guys passing by with their new car. And Baby and Deborah immediately approached them. Like Bonnie and Bonnie. Baby also managed to steal the car. He went straight to headquarters to pick up a recording cassette. Baby also told Doc about everything that happened, including when he shot Buddy. Fortunately Doc and Baby have a relationship that is more than just colleagues, so Doc really believes what Baby says. Doc says that the whole city has been filled with police, and advised him not to trust anyone except his partner. But just before they left the place Buddy came to take revenge. Run. Now only Baby and Deborah are left to fight Buddy. Even though it's hard to avoid Buddy, Baby isn't at his wit's end here. He also ordered Deborah to fish him out. And when Buddy was careless, Baby immediately hit his car and it fell to the ground floor. But apparently Buddy managed to get out of the car before it fell to the ground floor and managed to divert Baby too. Buddy immediately pointed his gun at Baby. Fortunately, Deborah here managed to help Baby by hitting Buddy with a crowbar in the car. This also made them successful in paralyzing Buddy. Unfortunately, the effect of the gun's boom made Baby's tinnitus react again, so he couldn't hear anything. The scene shifts to an empty street. Deborah is seen driving a car while listening to a song. Hearing that song, Baby woke up. And it's a recording of Baby's mother's voice, arrived when they crossed a bridge. It turned out that the police had blocked the road. Deborah, who was shocked, immediately reflexed and put the car in reverse, but was stopped by Baby. Baby immediately hugged Deborah while whispering that she shouldn't have been involved in this action while taking the key and throwing it away. Baby surrendered and ended all his journey. On the day of Baby's trial, Deborah, Joe, and everyone he had helped during the action gave positive statements about Baby, including the bank teller he was helping at that time. At the end of the judge's decision, Baby was found guilty and sentenced to 25 years in prison. And a few days after that, Deborah sent a letter about her feelings. In the letter, Deborah admitted that she was not used to accepting that Baby's real name was Miles. And the movie is over. Thank you for watching.
Look forward to the next video.